Welcome to Law You Should Know. The law affects every aspect of our lives, our home, our jobs, and our recreational activities. Now you can learn about the law and how to protect yourself against the loss of your liberty or property. Learn how to stand up for your rights and seek compensation when you have been wronged. Your host for Law You Should Know is attorney Kenneth J. Landau with the Mineola Law Firm of Shane, Dox, Denise, and Corker. He's a member of the Committee on Professional Ethics of the Bar Association of Nassau County and counsel to the Nassau Academy of Law. And now, here is your host for Law You Should Know, attorney Kenneth J. Landau. Hi, welcome to Law You Should Know. Today we're going to discuss preventing auto accidents, and our special guest is Audra Ford Inn, and she is an auto mechanic and uh, one of the few women in the field and also the owner of a of a auto shop in Queens, and you'll hear more about her a little later. She's also a DMV inspector, and she's the first female to take ownership of the Great Bear Auto and Body Shop in Flushing, Queens, and it's her family's fourth-generation auto shop in Flushing, Queens, New York. Audra, welcome to Law You Should Know. Well, thanks so much for having me. And while we're talking about preventing auto accidents and auto maintenance, Maintenance and etc. We'll also pick your brain to find out about auto mechanics as a career for both for young women and for men today. Absolutely. Why is it so important to prevent auto accidents? Well, that that's a huge question. Preventing auto accidents is important because we're driving in the cars. Your life matters, and so does mine. And there's so many people out there driving. Well, there's. To more than 250 million licensed drivers in the United States of America right now. Mm-hmm. And there's approximately 6 million car accidents every year? That's, that's correct. More than 6 million accidents, and 12 to 15% of those accidents are directly due to poor vehicle maintenance. So let's talk about that first. What are some of the how reasons why poor vehicle maintenance can contribute to an auto accident? Well, if you think about it, just just you know, if we if we go on the simple side, if a brake light bulb is not working, the person who's behind you will not know if you're braking. If they're not paying attention to the cars that are actually in front of them, well then there's a likelihood that they they could actually hit you. And another issue would be tire pressure. Um let's say it's a blowout can mm-hmm. cause one car to go out of control and cause an accident oh my goodness yes so tires tires well tire pressure itself if you don't have the right tire pressure in your car then if your pressure is too low it will wear out the side walls of your tire now why is that a big deal is because the side wall of the tire is actually the weakest part of the tire and if there's any damage cracks or if it's worn that's the leading cause for blowouts. And sometimes the tire can be just old or past its lifetime, or people just damage tires, you know, when they park and hit curbs, etc. Mm-hmm. Which is why it's even more for you to be aware of it, because they're so easily affected. And, of course, having th- things like changing your wipers every once in a while is going to improve your visibility so that you can see better while it's raining or you know, if you're driving under poor conditions. That's right. 90% of decisions are made based on visibility. So, so you, what you're able to see? 100%. You want to be able to see 100% all the time. And you also want to be visible, so you want to make sure your headlights are on at the appropriate times. You, you absolutely want to have your headlights on at the appropriate times and in bad weather. But there's also, if you, if you look at the headlights sometimes, you could see that there's a haze that's formed over them. And it's because the plastic headlights are oxidizing from the sun, putting a film over it, which limits the light that's shining through. And what can be done for that? You need a headlight polish. And uh, so that can be repaired. It's important to get that cloudiness off the headlight. It's an inexpensive repair. It's something that you could do yourself, and it increases your visibility so that you can see the road. Okay, and it's also good to keep the headlights clean. You know, dirt or bugs or debris, if they're blocking your headlight, it's not going to be as effective. Absolutely. Same like with your windshield. If you have bugs and stuff on it, it's distracting when you're looking through. And these may seem like minor, petty things, but these can help improve your visibility and help you avoid accidents. And that's the point. 
And what about in terms of driving? Uh, are there some tips you have on driving for people young and old that will help them prevent the accidents? Oh, right now in New York, it is like pothole crater season. So going over potholes is a, a way to prevent an accident would be to heed caution to see if there is a pothole that is coming up in front of you. If you can't see the road, you could see the car in front of you steering around it or veering around it. But you like you don't want to step on your brake while you're going over that pothole because it puts too much stress on the front end and it hits harder than it would if you were just rolling over it and the lower speed is always better. And also if you're braking suddenly, it may throw off the car behind you and you don't want them to hit you in the rear. Absolutely. And if you can safely turn to avoid it, that's one option as well. Please make sure that you look around you if you're going to safely veer off to avoid it. But if you're going fast over a pothole, it can damage the tire or the rim. It can cause you to lose control as well. Oof. It could also do damage to your oil pan or your transmission pan, your front end and your suspension. So for all those reasons, you want to be very careful and cautious when you go over potholes, especially this time of year. Without a doubt. And look around you. Now, what about in terms of you know, being on the roads or the, the highways? How can, you know, what's the safe distance to be when you're traveling behind other cars or alongside other cars? Well, personally, I like to be two to three cars behind when I'm just cruising and having a good ride. So that aggressiveness when you're driving is, is really something to pay attention to because you don't want to be up somebody's backside in case their brake lights are not working or if they aggressively need to brake. And you may be so close you can't even see their brake lights. Uh-huh. Or, yeah. And, mm. and really, it's going to be doomed for you and the car in front of you and maybe others if you have to brake suddenly. And if you had been traveling a few car lengths back, this all could have been avoided. Without a doubt. And you're not going to get to where you're going any faster, and you're probably scaring the, scaring the driver ahead of you a lot. Well, being a, a respectful driver, as well as being um, one who, who's maintaining their, their vehicle, is, is all we can ask. That, that's, that's, I think, good citizenship. Right. Sharing the road and, and not giving everyone their space mm -hmm. and a safe space. Please. What about in terms of changing lanes? Any tips on that? Well, we're talking about not doing things abruptly. Um, but once you have your directional on and, the, and it is time for you to go, it is your time to go. So don't hold back. Same with merging. When it comes time to get onto the highway, you should absolutely take that opportunity when it comes. Otherwise, you're holding people up behind you. And now you're at risk of causing accidents. You might miss it all because you went ahead. And also, when you are trying to change lanes, it's it's better whether it's on the highway or just the street it's good if the other cars give you a little room so it'll know that you're slowing down for them and trying to let them in if you're inching up on them that it, it's going to make it harder for that person to exercise a little judgment well exercise judgment and be a courteous driver yeah i mean so it's good to have, always have a zone of safety or a safe space between you and the other car and that applies to cars trying to turn ahead of you, etc. Right, so please be mindful and let the person who's trying to get into your lane so that they can get off the highway, let them in. Because if, there must, if there's any misunderstanding, it could result in an accident or increased stress for you and for them. Unnecessarily, and then you're not getting where you wanted to go quickly. And what about, um, and again, as you said before, before you change lanes, you've really got to make sure it's safe to do so. Right. Well, the, that, that's the purpose of the blinkers. They're there to help you communicate with other drivers so that they know what you're doing. Right. But people may not automatically stop. We're, we're suggesting it's a good idea if they do. But uh, <laughs> Well, they all took some sort of driving test. Now, what about blind spots? Can those be a big problem? Well, of course, blind spots could be a big problem. And if you're familiar with your car, you can help reduce what your blind spot visibility is. But also, positioning your mirrors is really important. You know, those side view mirrors are supposed to be giving you the view of both sides next to you, not your own vehicle. And that's why they've gotten bigger over the years, so they might do a better job of that. And they've got big magnifiers on it, too. And... 
the, some of the newer cars have a little light to warn you when it may, when there may be a car alongside of you in your blind spot. Is you that, like that? Do you think it's a good piece of safety equipment to have as an extra eyes and ears, so to speak? Everything is a good safety feature for extra eyes and ears, regardless of what it is. If it means that you have fog lights and daytime running lights and your headlights so that people can see you, sure. But a lot of it really is also about you utilizing those features. Well, I think these come on automatically, so you don't have to do anything to activate them, but if they just warn you that it's not safe to change lanes. You mean you're not talking about a directional? No, this is on the mirrors, like a, a light that comes on to tell you it's not safe to change lanes because perhaps the oh, other cars assist. alongside yes, yes, of you, yes, 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 lane Christ. assist. Mm -hmm. it, well, that, that depends on your distractibility. So okay. each feature is designed for that purpose. They even have ones that make your seat vibrate. And I think there's also some newer cars have a feature to warn you of a vehicle or pedestrian ahead of Approaching you. Approaching, behind you, ahead of you, and on sides of you. Okay. Now, in terms of backing up, or do you find that backup cameras are a, a positive thing? Absolutely. Without a doubt, they're wonderful. So it's good to go slow and look around on your own, but those backup cameras give you... Oh, really make it easier to back up and give you better visibility. Of course they do. However, they do give you a false sense of judgment for the, what's behind you. Because that blind spot that we were just talking about, well, if there's a blind spot that you can't see and you're not looking behind you literally and you're relying on that mirror, on the, the camera, you could be missing something. So you still have to look. You still have to exercise caution. You must. But this helps you a little bit. You must exercise caution. You must look all around before making that move. And one of your tips, and you may have covered a little bit, is just having a safe driving distance from other cars. And that's true, you know, in terms of tailgating. Well, you, yes, but the speed limit is, is, is a genuine... Gen, the speed limit is... A good guideline right. for how, every, how how fast everybody should. And be as going. you're driving, it's best to sl slow down uh, gradually if you can. If you see congestion ahead, if you see a red light ahead, rather than stepping on the brakes at the last minute when the car behind you may be a little close to you. Right. Well, there, there's two thoughts there. As an as your auto mechanic, if you keep riding your brake and slamming on your brake, then you're going to need brakes sooner. So. You know that that for me is isn't so and, bad. And it can be a big it can be a big ticket item. But yes, they're gonna uh, someone's gonna if someone rides the brakes and is doing a lot of starts and stops and a last minute breaker, they're gonna wear out their brakes a lot sooner. They sure maybe are. in half the time. Mm -hmm. And that's good for you, but maybe not so good for them. Well, if you can't hear it, I got a big smile on thinking about that because now you've all been warned well okay. in advance. I'm gonna take a short break. Then we come back. We'll find out. We'll find other tips for driving safely and whether water mechanics is a good field to go into. Our guest is Audra Ford in. As you've heard, she's an owner of a she's an auto mechanic and owner of a repair shop in Queens. You're listening to Law You Should Know here on ninety point three WHPC and also at nccradio.org. We'll be back in a moment. This portion of programming on WHPC is brought to you on behalf of the Nassau County Bar Association, who wants you to know about ADR, Alternate Dispute Resolution, which can help you avoid costly, lengthy, and uncertain litigation in court. By resolving disputes through mediation or arbitration, it gives you control over who decides your case. A mediator helps all parties to reach an agreement they can live with, or an arbitrator selected by the parties hears and decides the case. Your attorney can still represent you, but you control who decides your case. ADR is faster and less stressful than fighting in court, and it is a great way to resolve divorce, employment, or commercial disputes. ADR is now offered through the Nassau County Bar Association. Find out more about how ADR can help resolve your dispute by calling 516-747-4070 or visit NassauBar.org. Once again, we continue with Law You Should Know. From the Mineola Law Firm of Shane, Docks, Denise, Corker, and Sauer, here is attorney Kenneth J. Landau. Hi, this is Ken Landau, and welcome back to Law You Should Know. We're talking with Audra Ford Inn, and she's an auto mechanic, one of the few women in the field, and she's also the owner of... 